Morris gave back to the community all the time. That, that was his big thing. He, and because of, of the problems he had um, with mental health and, um, and different obstacles he overcame. Morris was the individual that pulled the community together. He started as, he was a self-made businessman, so he knew what it was like to come up through. Um, he was very open and honest about his struggles in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, Morris, I've known all my life. Uh, interesting anecdote, when I was 12 or 13 years old, I'd be hitchhiking into town. Morris lived up the street, he'd pick me up all the time. Not everybody would, but, uh, but Morris did that. And I think that speaks well to what Morris was all about as a person in our community. He liked Belleville and he took care of Belleville people and he did it his entire life. He liked to give back. His parents uh, had trained him to do that, uh, serve the community. His father was a mayor for a short time in Belleville, and his mother was quite active in the community, and he learned from them that you give back. Uh, Morris Rollins was an incredibly kind and generous man, but was always also very humble and really uh, was a storyteller and we thoroughly enjoyed having coffee with him early in the mornings at his office, usually far earlier than I would typically get into work. Born on a kitchen table in Tweed in 1927, Maurice grew from humble beginnings with his brother and parents, Harry and Maud. Aged one, the family moved the 30 miles southwest to Belleville settling at 177 Charles Street. He spent his formative years at the Queen Alexander School on Ann Street, with the family later deciding to move a little further north, up Charles Street, when Maurice hit his early teens. From an early age, Maurice would do anything to earn a dollar. In the wintertime, he would offer to shovel driveways for money, later acknowledging, if you are going to become a millionaire, you need to start young. Jobs with the railway and other exploits took him to the end of high school. It's here that he suffered his first bout of depression, an illness that would ultimately shape his life and lead him into becoming a risk taker. At the age of 20 and a year into a position as a pharmaceutical dispenser at BGH, he enrolled as a pharmaceutical student at the University of Toronto. His depression struck again leading him to return home with no job and limited prospects. With his university education in tatters, pharmacy career ended and only work experience limited to odd jobs, Maurice went out and got the only job available to him as a laborer. To understand the success of Maurice Rollins, you have to appreciate his work ethic. Simply put, it was work as much as you can as many hours in the day as possible to get the job done. This was certainly the spirit when he built his first house at the cost of $3,000, aged 24. His on-the-job training at McFarland's Construction had taught him how to put a job together, and he spent no time in putting it to use. At one point, there was hardly a residential street in Belleville without a Roland's house on it. By 1960, Maurice had units in Belleville, Picton, and Trenton. The next seven years would see him expand into cities further afield and even abroad. Developments in Kingston, 1963, Peterborough, 1965, and even across the UK in the Isle of Wight, 1967, followed. Through this period, Maurice continued to innovate and push boundaries. His signature waterfront development was built in 1977, years ahead of its time. The anchorage holds an iconic place today overlooking the Bay of Quinte. Not content with building houses and commercial buildings, the First Journey's End Motel opened in 1978. With revenues topping $116 million, the chain expanded across the globe with over 139 properties. Meanwhile, the commercial side of the property was booming, with Dairy Queens, plazas, restaurants, and schools, all part of Maurice's growing portfolio. Maurice had a stake in many projects. Century Place was just one in a huge portfolio. By 1980, 
Roland's construction had built more than 8,500 housing units. Maurice's dominance of the housing and commercial sectors continued way into the 90s. Eventually, Maurice sold his shares in Journey's End, leaving the hotel business at the ripe old age of 72. While the share price was not as expected, he left the hotel business a wealthy man. Most men at 72 would be content with dreams of winter sun, money in the bank, and taking on the local golf course. But for Maurice, these years heralded a new era in development, taking on the retirement living sector with developments in Coburg, Burlington, and Oshawa. At the grand age of 72, Maurice's passion for building continued with a move into the retirement home sector. His properties in Coburg, Burlington, and Oshawa saw him embrace the residents and foster a caring approach to long-term care. This personal approach to people was certainly something that defined him. As the years ticked on, further development projects ensued. Maurice's achievements stretched far beyond the world of construction. He was a true community builder and known for his many philanthropic endeavors. The Maurice Rowlands Leadership Challenge played a pivotal role in United Way's annual campaign success, leveraging over $3.5 million since its inception. Although he supported many charities, both publicly and behind the scenes, his passion for supporting mental health within the community was evident. This stemmed from his own personal battles with the disease. In May 2015, the Maurice Rollins Center of Hope was established and dedicated to counseling, education, and support. The center was one of Maurice's many philanthropic passions. He was a giving man, a man of the people, and a true community builder. For a man who achieved a lot in life, making money seemed almost a secondary happenstance to what drove him. He was a community builder and a person of the people. When he started his construction company, he said he had no idea how much money he would make. That wasn't the goal. He just wanted to build more. Could it be done today? Could a high school graduate build himself a small empire with little training. Maurice's legacy lives on. You can do anything you want to do in your hometown. And that's to show people that uh, you can be successful and still have and still fight serious, serious depression. <laughs>